from Nice, France. It's the Cube covering .next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is SiliconANGLE Media's production of the Cube live broadcast from Nutanix .next in Nice, France. To help me wrap up for today's coverage, I'm happy to have Jens Soldner, uh, who is a consultant, does media, writes for some organizations, uh, someone I've gotten to know at some industry events over the last couple of years. Uh, so Jens, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks you. thanks for inviting me. And happy to be here at Nutanix Next Conference. Awesome event, and I think the vendor has a bright future in front of him. Well, so you know, we're a year after Nutanix IPO'd. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the attendance at this show doubled. Absolutely, you know, every Nutanix show, and I've been at all five of them, uh, you know, customers are usually, they're, they're enthusiastic. It's self-selecting, right? You, you go to a VM world, you come mm -hmm. to a Nutanix show, uh, you know, Veritas, uh, you know, so, so some of these shows, Veeam's uh, show, uh, you know, usually the, the, the customers, if it's a good measure of how the company's doing, and you know, barometer is customers are happy, they like what they're doing. Uh, one of the things I like about Nutanix customers is they aren't just, you know, oh, we love everything and we believe everything that Nutanix mm -hmm. has. It was like, hey, uh, Calm, well, I, you know, I talked to a couple of customers that views it and they're like, it's great, but everybody else is like, yeah, I'm waiting to get my hands on it and really beat it up and we'll see if it does what it is because Nutanix has proven themselves and needs to continually, you know, prove themselves time and again. Uh, really, I think, something that reminds me of, of the cloud era, because if I'm buying from public cloud mm -hmm. and I'm buying from a consumption basis, if I don't like something, you know, I'll, I'll move, I'll stop paying. So what, what, what's what been catching your ear and eye at the show so far? What have you liked? What, what are you still questioning and want to learn more about? Uh, well, there's a lot of good things coming, actually, like the new version 5.5, which will be out end of this year or so we hear. So that's like brings, I would say, some good incremental innovation, nothing overly massive, but some good stuff in there. But then of course, like the future looking stuff, Calm, Xi, and so on. So that looks pretty promising, but as you said, like it's not available right now yeah. and we want to get my hands dirty. Yeah, so it, 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 what you like is if you talk to the customers that are deeply involved, they've probably mm. been beta testing uh, a lot of the stuff in 5.5. .5. Some of the features get out in the community edition. Uh, in the keynote they talked about, NVMe was one that they tested. Anything particular that you've been hearing, uh, you know, customers that, you know, chomping at the bit, interested, you know, 5.5, .5, oh great, finally we have that. I think the generic compute platform is a good thing. So in order to enable new users cases like SAP stuff, HANA, maybe you need it for Oracle licensing, this kind of stuff. Where you so were you talking about the, with the with thing they call AC2? Yeah. Uh, which, that's not in 5.5, I don't I believe, oh. no? Oh, I, then I think that's I a future got the one, wrong so. impression, okay. It's a, so. and, and, and to be yeah. honest, that, that's one of the critiques sometimes is uh -huh. you go look at this and you get in the keynote and it's a deluge of mm -hmm. so much stuff, you need the cheat sheet. So uh, I look through you know, Nutanix, they did a press release, there's like floor blog posts. It takes a little while for, you know, those of us that look at this to sort through and be like, oh wait, which of this, as you said, 5.5? Oh, does that mean I can do it today? Oh, well, it, it's coming real soon and if you're a beta person, yeah. you can do it, as opposed to uh, the uh, object storage and AC2 uh, mm -hmm. type pieces. Uh, if I remember right, and I'm sure Nutanix will watch and tell us if we, we, we got it wrong though, uh, was a you know coming future, uh, we'll let you know when we have a date. A mm -hmm. uh, little bit different now as a public company too. A lot of these, you know, they don't pin down on certain quarters or dates because then that impacts financial reporting. Right. Yeah. Um, T talk to us about, you know, you, you were obviously at the keynote. What, what, what else have you been doing? What sessions have you been going to? Or, uh, you know, what, what's been happening? Ah, we had a lot of, like, background talks with the Nutanix executive leadership, like Sunil Potti, right before our talk here. And we've talked actually, like, in depth about, like, questions the other journalists and I had, like, about calm, when will it be available, how will it be priced? What can you do? Can you move apps from one cloud to the other? Not in the near future, maybe in the more distant future. It looks pretty promising and for a cloud management person that is one of my main jobs um, out there in the normal life, then it looks pretty good actually. But as you said, getting the hands dirty is an essential part and maybe that's coming a little bit too short here yeah. to really see what's happening and not just announcements and announcements. A absolutely, I mean, if, if you were to place bets on, you know, what are the important pieces mm -hmm. in the future, Calm and Xi, absolutely something Nutanix has been talking a lot. Uh, super important that they get it right. Uh, you've been tracking Calm yeah. since the acquisition, you know, a a any nuances, you know, what, 
what do they need to do? You know, what's going to be ready? What what do they need to have in the future to to really make that work? Yeah, and I think they absolutely want to get it right. I think in the grand scheme of things, like delivering it like two weeks earlier or later in a like five years race with the competition is not making such a huge difference. So rather than delivering a immature and unready product, yeah, how do you say, like filing the edges off and making it smooth should take some time. However, me as a technical person, I like to get my hands on the stuff and really see it. So that's, that's the downside. Okay. Um, you know, get, getting your hands dirty is something that a lot of the customers here mm. like to do. Um, do. Do you get in play with the community edition and the like, or? Uh, not yet, but I have a Nutanix 4Node cluster waiting in our data center ready for installation, and we want to compare it like how it runs with vSphere and how it runs with AHV. So that's Hyper-V, I think, is unlikely workload, actually. Yeah, so you know, we've been hearing the, the, the last couple of shows, you know, mm -hmm. HV's really been front and center. Um, it, it's an interesting mix for them to balance because if, even if about a third of customers mm -hmm. of Nutanix are running AHV, that means two thirds of customers still are running you know, one of the other hypervisors Probably out there. Probably so the other. Uh, I, and yeah. even I, I put the question to Nutanix yeah. and I said, what is victory? What is the, the ultimate goal? And it's not 100% AHV. They're not looking to become a hypervisor company. Yeah. It, it's they want to be a platform, work in the multi-cloud world. So we, when you talk to companies, you know, how, how does that discussion go? Is AHV, you know, a central discussion point, or is it some of the features that come along with it uh, that help? I would say it's rather on the sidelines. I think it makes sense from an economic point of view, like not having to pay additional licenses, obviously, um, and getting the impression, getting the right, uh, the right kind of like experience with the product. And even Nutanix, I think they say, if the customer wants this and this and this extra, they say, hey, go get vSphere. We are offering you a standard path, like with the 80% of the features that you really, really need, and those 20 super esoteric stuff like fault tolerance that nobody, I, nobody is really using in vSphere. They are not bringing it to to yeah. AHV. They're keeping the product clean, simple, easy. Yeah. So yeah, and you said cloud management uh, mm -hmm. kind of kind of a main focus area of you. Mm -hmm. What does Nutanix have to do to be, you know, a strong player in that market, you know, over the next two years? I think they're actually on a good way already with the calm stuff. Um, the thing is, like, we need to see it if we can compete with the other players out there, yeah. VM there, and Red Hat, and you name it basically. And then um, to see if it gets accepted in the market, how the marketplace, the car marketplace, takes off, and so on. I think the adoption, if it gain significant adoption if there is traction in the market, in the blogosphere and so on. Yeah. I think that's that's yeah. crucial. So, so you mentioned VMware and Red Hat. I mean, big companies, mm -hmm. gigantic ecosystems. I mean, you know, we all know the VMware ecosystem and I mean, Red Hat, open source, you know, everybody's there. Been at, been at Red Hat Summit for, for many years mm -hmm. now. Um, any others that you'd say who, who they should be kind of matching up as customers will be? I uh, think Computer Associates has a good valid offering about we personally see in the German market, most of the time we realize automation. We've written three books on it, my brothers and I, so that's maybe we are a little bit opinionated <laughs> and biased <laughs> here in this case, but VMware is doing a good job and in this cloud management space, and of course, they have a tight integration with the other products like NSX that they have, and I think Nutanix is very eager to catch up in yeah. these areas where they have gaps. What, what, one of the underlying simmering uh, conversations at, at, at a Nutanix event is that kind of VMware Nutanix relationship. And we talked about still lots of Nutanix deployments are using VMware. Um, didn't feel that they were bashing uh, VMware no. a, a, at this event, but you know, what are you seeing when you talk to customers and you know you, you use a lot of VMware? How, how's that relationship? You know, are there any challenges there or things that uh, are, are concerning? But at the end of the day, it's the customer's decision what they are going for. I think most of the customers might not go all in Nutanix, but only place it like in certain use cases and so on. And of course, VMware is not happy. Why should they be? And they are positioning their vSAM product, which is running quite well. 
pretty aggressively, but Nutanix has a different storyline. I think it's not only about the IOPS and it's about the simplicity of the whole thing and offering the customer a real simple path to manage it in a cloud, cloud-enabled fashion, and that's where they're really doing a good job. However, VMware, they can cover everything, but you can configure so many like little things and that makes the, the whole thing like huge and complicated and of course you can, any use case can somehow be tailored to, but also if you have a vendor who has like a real good storyline of simplicity, like Nutanix, they have a good chance here. Yeah, uh, th there was a lot of discussion, uh, it was interesting. We talk at Nutanix, they talk about, you know, they want to get one click. It's about simplicity. Mm -hmm. um, then there's all of this, you know, learning from what other customers have done. Uh, I've got artificial intelligence mm -hmm. starting to help in there. Uh, how do you see that trend going as to, you know, if I'm an administrator, is it reducing the number of clicks or am I going to be able to kind of let go of the rain some and allow some, you know, some other tooling uh, and, you know, knowledge bases really drive some of that decision making? I think that's pretty helpful to have these like expert knowledge, knowledge bases built in. Um, there's also a startup that does a similar thing in the VMware space, Runecast, great guys and so on. So that's, that's good. But it's also like challenging, I would say, for partners that they really need to see that with Nutanix, of course, we are going to sell as a partner, you're going to sell less like wrecking and stacking of servers. You as a partner, you really need to refocus, learn the orchestration, learn the automation, get into a container stuff in order to offer to your customers a valuable offering, a value proposition. So everybody needs to learn and I think Nutanix makes the life easier in these like mundane day-to-day -day activities. So that's, I would say, a good yeah, benefit of getting such an environment. All right, so again, we're, we're, we're about at the halfway mark uh, mm -hmm. of the event. Uh, any other key takeaways, customer conversations that, that you'd want to share? Uh, well, I've uh, talked to a couple of partners, friends of mine from the VMware instructor community, and they say we are going all in Nutanix, so that was pretty impressive yeah. here. And that's also what I heard, not only from those who are actually doing it, but of course from the Nutanix management. Easy to understand why they say this, so I think there is a huge traction, so some partners are seem to got the message and seem to say, yeah, yeah, we are going all in. So that was one of the things. And of course, like, uh, I'll go a little bit more technical tomorrow. So the day today was really packed with the official schedule. Tomorrow is a little bit more free. So I'll have a couple of more conversations with actual customers from a large Swiss bank, uh, where we'll be doing the vRealize implementation soon, but they are also into Nutanix. So they're both a VMware and a Nutanix partner. So we'll meet up later on and yeah. That's All pretty right. much the so, schedule. So Jens, I, I never do this, but you got any questions for me uh, to, for, for the wrap? Um, what I would like to know is like, what's your take on the micro-segmentation part of Nutanix? Can compete with the other offerings? And I have not really looked at it so far. Yeah. It looked pretty impressive to me in the keynote. So, so look, I'll say two pieces. One is uh, it's it's, one of the top items that I'd heard from users that they're super excited about. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a bank site just interviewed earlier today. Uh, I think you know financial services uh, and service providers were really excited for mm -hmm. uh, the micro segmentation. And that being said, I've also talked to a bunch of the partner community, um, and of course it's the typical. Well, how much is Nutanix doing versus what you know the partners? Oh, we've had this, and ours is much more you know future uh, feature rich and the like. Uh, so um, it's it's good to see Nutanix moving down this line. Um, they need to balance how much they'll do versus what some of their partners mm -hmm. uh, that are especially deeper in the networking space uh, can do there. So uh, it's definitely one that, talk to customers that are getting in, digging into it, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good one and definitely uh, when you talk about uh, those features coming out, that one that customers have been asking for a bit. So um, like VMware it, it has done in the past, a lot of times it's, there's a, probably a lot of customers that What's built in is going to be good enough, but then if I really need, you know, the the, the Cadillac mm -hmm. of it, I might need to pull in some best of breed partner uh, to be able to compete it. So, uh, cool. Now All I right. think that also happens here. Yeah. Of course, if you look at the partner ecosystem, it's also right, pretty impressive, and most of the named guys are in here. All right. Well, Jens Soldner, a pleasure catching up with you. Thanks for helping us, uh, you know, here on the Cube, and uh, we're wrapping up uh, day one of two days of live coverage of the Cube. I'm Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE.